Hey there, welcome to another Paint With Me video. This is Elaine, if you're new here, and I'm a mixed media illustrator. My favorite mediums are color pencil and gouache watercolor. In my last Paint With Me video, we painted some summer flowers, and because so many of you enjoyed it, and some even reached out about me doing another one, so here we are. Some of you know that I recently moved, so I'm still a bit disorganized, but I hope that once I settle in more, I'll have more time to make videos for you. But for now, bring out your brushes and paints and let's start painting wildflowers together. And I'm making some Gonfrina flower tea right now. Gonfrina tea has anti-inflammatory properties and has other medicinal uses. I also made some double chocolate chip cookies and I wanted to show you how gooey they are when they're fresh out of the oven. Alright, now the tea and the cookie don't really make a good pair, but it's okay. Let's get started. We will be illustrating wildflowers today. I'll be using color pencils and gouache. I'm giving my dried gouache a good spray to moisten it. Alright, now first up, let's start with an easy cone flower. This flower is also known as Echinacea, and I'm using a brown and a pink for this flower. Now, I always keep a scrap paper on the side just to test my colors and brush strokes. Now for the cone center, simply using a filbert brush with a rounded flat edge, drag down and lift up. Now using the same filbert brush, create strokes from side to side using a little more pressure when you start on the outside of the petal, then gently lift up so you create a thinner stroke toward the center. You can slightly curve your petals and make them different lengths to make your flower look more organic. blended into each other and it doesn't really bother me if you don't want your paints to really like blend in like that then you can keep more white spaces between or you can let this area dry before you paint in these areas but this will happen when your strokes touch each other so cone flowers kind of have like a longer stamen and then if i wanted i can use this like more like pointier paintbrush to make a pointier leaf okay so they have some long pointy leaves so i'm just going to drag i'm just like mixing these two colors together it's not exactly this green so I just mix them together and then you might put a little leaf here and then just drag and pull up now I'm just going to add some finishing details with color pencils. Alright, we're done with our first wild flower. Next up is Pasque Flower. It's a pretty short flower belonging to the buttercup family. I wonder if this is a new flower to you because it's a new flower to me. Actually, the next few wildflowers are all flowers that I just learned about. So I hope you learned some new flowers in this video. Let me know in the comments below. I'm starting with the center of this flower using color pencil. I like to create texture and detail with pencil, then paint the larger surfaces. So I'm going to be using a light lavender color for the petals. I'm using the pointy tip of this brush and painting two strokes side by side, making sure the point meets. Now I'm painting a few more past flowers and then adding the stem and their interesting leaves. Okay, now let's finish this one up. Alright, now the next flower is called a sand dune wallflower. I found these flowers on a Colorado hiking blog. I hope you don't think that I draw these flowers without references. I'm looking at photos of these flowers as I paint them. And since this flower has round petals, I'm going to use a round brush. Can you tell I'm trying to cover as many different color flowers as I can? Before this yellow paint fully dries, I'm going to drop in some mustard color just to give it some dimension. Now with a color pencil, I'm going to define the edges of this flower a little. 
Lastly, let's add in some leaves. I always feel nervous adding words to the actual illustration because I'm afraid I'll mess up, but there's a certain charm to handwritten words. The name of the next flower is Pinstemon. It sounds like a Pokemon name. It's also known as Spear Tongue. I'm going to be illustrating a blue one, and this wildflower is native to the western US where the climate is drier. I love drawing the little bud parts of the flower, and I also think that bell-shaped flowers are really cute. So I think this flower is pretty easy. With a small round brush, we're just painting a five petal flower with a light blue paint, then using a medium blue, we're painting the bell shape, which connects the stem. Now with some color pencils, I'm just going to spice things up and give them some nice details. I love the way that these flowers are clustered together on one stem. And I think this might be my favorite flower so far. Let me know in the comments below if there's a specific flower you like drawing more. Also, I wanted to share that I have a free beginner's guide to gouache watercolor linked below. If you want to learn more about this paint, grab it and let me know what you think. Okay, now for the last flower today. This is the shooting star flower. It's a cute name, right? It's a tall wildflower that has clusters of drooping blossoms that resemble a shooting star. I'm mixing a fuchsia color. It's a very vibrant flower and I'm just painting some lance shaped petals. On some of these petals, I'm purposely not completely meeting the strokes so that I can leave a sliver of dry white as a detail line. I think these flowers are fun to draw because they're so different from the other flowers. Whoops, I kind of smeared a petal. That's what I get for leaning all over my sketchbook and not letting these dry first. So don't do what I did. Give your artwork some space. Now I'm finishing up this flower with some tall stems. I'm connecting them by the neck. And I'm also going to add a little more blossoms because I feel like that will make it feel more balanced. And now I'm just going to add a wide leaf on the bottom and we are done. I hope you enjoy this paint with me video. Remember that I'm looking forward to being tagged on Instagram so that I can see what you've painted. It's always so inspiring for me to see your work. So this is goodbye until next time. Thanks for watching.